Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is your friendly neighborhood Dragon Slayer presenting to you another commentary. Uh, we're going to be looking at scouts today, in particular flex scouting. Um, it's not a good replay I should say, it has some bugs in it so if you will forgive me. The uh, map is pro over as you see, the M41 Bulldog post 9.6 nerf uh, lost a little bit of um, rate of fire. So just straight off the bat, you're going to try and head to a passive position for just about any scout. If you can set somewhere passive, it's better for you, and generally you'll, you'll spot someone without them seeing you if you're set up properly. This will provide you with the necessary spotting damage to complete many of the personal missions, but also spare you from ammo costs. Now, granted, this does affect your win 8 because you don't get win 8 points towards spotting damage. I'm uncertain why, but they they just want to go off pure damage stats. So the damage you deal, the kills, the base caps, the base resets, the spotting, the spotting tanks counts, but spotting damage doesn't. Now, as you saw off the bat, I had to play an audible. I was unable to go to my normal passive spot because I was spotted off the bat. If you get spotted, bounce out. There's no need to sit there and die. You're taking eyes out of the game. A scout can be the most annoying thing for an enemy team because they will constantly get lit and make them have to move or they'll have artillery shelling on them which will force them to find cover. Someone who sits in the open while artillery is raining on them typically does not live long. Um, we see with that Churchill. Um, that Churchill gets smacked I think, uh, yeah, for like 650. Why? Because artillery was looking where the scouts were at. That's dangerous. If scouts lighten you up, you need to maneuver. Especially in Churchill, you don't need to be out in the open like like this guy is. Um, you see, scouts, when you see a kill chance like that, and you can bounce in and out real quick, take it. To knock an enemy tank out of the game is crucial. That took uh, eyes away from their forward, uh, forward uh, they took their forward eyes away. The next thing we're going to look at is active scouting, like I'm doing here on the ridge. Active scouting use the terrain features to only expose the commander's hatch or as much of the turret as you feel comfortable with. The spotting portion for the, your turret, the highest point, is the commander's hatch. There's a spotting point up there. So you only have to expose the commander's hatch over an obstacle and it will spot for you. This applies to any tank. If you spot the commander's hatch, it's, it's one of the spotting points on the vehicle you can and will see the enemy vehicle. Now, how much covers in between the commander's hatch and you will affect spotting mechanics. So please keep that in mind. You also have to flex, like with the scout that just came into our base. When, when an enemy scout starts pushing your base, the, the tank that can respond the fastest is another light tank. It is advised that you flex back to help your artillery. That artillery probably would have survived if we would have gotten back sooner. We, I just responded too slowly. And you always have to keep an eye out when you're scouting or doing anything. If some, you see someone doing something, just politely ask like I did. Just please get in the fight. Hey, we need you. you don't, be, don't be mean about it. Don't be aggressive. But just if you can ask politely, and hopefully they'll get their attention, like right here. Is a is a good oppor is not a good opportunity, but a good examination of a scout that switches roles. If I would have kept spotting, my team wasn't able to hit what I was spotting now because my artillery is gone, and everyone else is sitting in the back. Now we can both be used in a scout and attack position. I can sit here with this prototype and just plug away at all these enemy tanks and fire. I think two or three rounds to the prototypes one. So we're, I'm basically doubling his the DPM right here, and I'm basically matching his DPM as well. The, um, the advantage of switching roles quickly is that you can maximize your XP and your credits. So if you're not doing a good job scouting or you're no longer useful scouting, switch roles to a sniper. If you're no longer being good at sniping, try and go spot something. See what you can't find for your team. Like right here, I switched again. I'm blowing buildings down. Why? That way the guys with the big guns don't have to do it. And that way they can shoot him when he's trying to hide behind cover. Um, so you, you can switch roles rapidly and still be quite effective for your team. 
you shouldn't just pigeonhole yourself somewhere and think this is going to work every single time. Once you do that, it's almost a guarantee that you're going to fail your team. I would advise constantly reevaluating where you're at and seeing if you couldn't improve your position and possibly increase your chances to win by helping your team out. This game had a 45% chance to win. The two best players on the team were in scouts. And you can see the AMX 1375 is sticking in the middle and is still spotting. So he's realized that his role is best played over there. I've realized my best role is played over here, supporting the flank that's being pushed pretty hard. We saw, what, a T29, a VK, a Tiger, uh, AMX, CDC. If I'm missing a tank, the T71. So five different tanks push this one area. And me and the prototype basically held them here because the back side of the hill didn't really push over and attack. The, the CDs, so all four tanks that were up top are dead. And, well, except the T-29, I think he ran away. But, so three of the tanks that went up there died, and the CDC backed off. So we basically won the hill by repositioning. And that's when the game shifts. They basically wasted three tanks pushing the hill to guys who were shooting them in the side. And right here, you see, you kind of see how they nerfed the accuracy uh, before the reticles fully zeroed in, which has effect to gameplay, yes. Um, you see that here, but look at this. The S it hits the ASTA, and it kind of hits them right here. So you, you kind of have to give credit where credit is due. They, they fixed some, and they nerfed a little, both at the same time. And now we see the final uh, act in all of scouting. The, the switch from a sniper to actually pushing and redirecting the front. We've basically gained the upper hand at this point. The game looks pretty firmly in hand. But it's going to require one last push, one last scouting run to actually see what the enemy has and assist my team in doing the damage necessary. There's one scout left on our team. Um, I'm pretty. I think it's another bulldog that has survived basically the entire game and has been held. I don't want to say held up, but hold up on the other side of the map, spotting the one-two line. So we've all scouts have reworked their positions as the game's progressed. So our scouts and our team did a very fantastic job of repositioning themselves to assist in the tank destroyers and their mission of long-range sniping. Uh, as you know, tank destroyers most of the time are thin-skinned, some exceptions, and can get pinned rather easily. Um, there, are, there are exceptions, but a lot of the ones that seem to be very good are very thin for some reason. Not sure why. Uh, at least it feels that way to me. And here's where it kind of gets lucky and unlucky at the same time. Um, I spot the little Storm I ST em Emil. I, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say its name. Nice little blind shot right there. If if you pop a shot off at last known location, if he disappears like that, chances are you're going to hit him. Now, now, if you look to your left, an AT-7 rolls up. Not like quickly, but like rolls up, takes aim, and misses in like a, a country mile. God, I understand snapshots, but he, it wouldn't have killed me anyways. So... You, you kind of see the ending of the game coming down quickly. I've realized it's time to push. I go in for the push, see if Artie's back here, don't see him, and just like, up. Oh, there's an AT-7. Oh, never mind. He's turning towards me. Don't turn towards me. I can't pin your front. So as he turns aside to me, take side shots. If you can do your best in scouts to avoid front head-on shots, it's better. So... And we kind of finish the game up here. So keep in mind, when you're scouting, change roles constantly. If one's not working for you, you need to swap to the next in the battle until you find something that fits. This has been your friendly neighborhood Dragon Slayer presenting to you another commentary. Peace out.